Okay, good morning guys. Once again, we are live on this beautiful sunny Tuesday morning. Pretty bright outside. Come join me. It is 10.24 a.m. on this 18th day of December 2018. Once again, we're going to look at a few verses of Scripture this morning as part of our devotion. Hello, everybody. We're going to do some reading in the book of Matthew, chapter 2. We're going to look at four verses. We're going to look at verse 1 and 2, and then we're going to skip down to verse 9 and 10. Morning, Jennifer. The topic of our devotion this morning is just be a light. And we can read scripture and throughout the Word of God that teaches us that we are the light of the world, that, you know, we're a light that is um, on a hill that cannot be hid. And I want to bring your attention to a part of the Christmas story. Um, most of the time, if you go in and read this, the Christmas story, you go into the book of Luke and you'll look at the last part of chapter 1 and then look at all of chapter 2 um, and you read the Christmas story, which um, I've kind of touched on um, before. Morning, Will. How you all doing? Merry Christmas to you guys. Hi, Sue. But... If we go and you watch Christmas pageants and the Christmas play, you know, you see where the, um, you know, Mary and Joseph and those shepherds come and then the wise men comes. And that's not very accurate because the wise men didn't show up to worship and give gifts to Jesus um, until Jesus was, uh, was two years old. And he was still in Bethlehem, but he was no longer in the stable in a manger um, he was in a house, the scripture teaches, and, and I'm not here to dispute that and, and say anything negative about that. But what I would like to talk about this morning, this was a sermon that God gave me this past Sunday night when we ministered over at um, Stockdale Baptist. But um, the night before, on a Saturday, um, as I was praying about a sermon and all, and I had gone to sleep, and God gave me this um, thought and this dream about this beautiful Bethlehem star and how the light you know led the wise men to Jesus and and, and got me to thinking and and you know and again we have a commandment and, and Christ teaches us that we should be a light of the world um, and let's look in Matthew chapter 2 we're going to read a few verses starting with verse 1 it says now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Verse 2, saying, Where is he that is, born of the Jew, that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Let's skip down to verse 9. It says, And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Verse 10, And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. If you look in verse 11, it says that they had gone into the house where Jesus and Mary was, and they knelt and they worshipped Jesus, and they presented gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, you know, so we add the wise men into the Christmas story in our plays because it's such a long story if we would try to fit everything in, you know. But there was a time span. And in fact, if you look into the verses, um, King Herod, or Herod, yeah, King Herod didn't even know about the birth of Jesus. The people in Jerusalem didn't know 
about the birth of Jesus. They were, the scripture says that they were amazed, they were astonished, they were troubled because of the story, you know, that there was a king of the Jews that was born. And just in a nutshell, but this doesn't have to do with my devotion, but I just want to throw this in real quick. But in a nutshell, the story went on to say that Herod heard about this and told the wise men, said, you go find this baby, and when you find him, send word back that I may go worship him. But that was not Herod's intention. Herod was going to put him to death. And when the wise men came and they worshipped Jesus and they stayed with them overnight and, and an angel had visited the wise men and told them, do not go back to um, Herod do not tell where where the baby Jesus is well the next morning they got up and they had returned home in a different route and we know the story goes on and says that Herod had was angry and, and knew that the wise men wasn't going to report back to him so he had made a decree that all the children from two years old and younger would be put to death which actually fulfilled Jeremiah's prophecy, you know, in the book of Jeremiah, where there'll be weeping and, and sadness in the land. But I, I said all that, but my main point this morning is to let you know that the star that was shining so bright had led the wise men right where Jesus was at. It was not like any other star. But this particular star had a radiant light. And the star would shine down right where Jesus was at. I want you to understand the wise men have heard of a baby being born and was the king of the Jews and they wanted to come and meet and worship and present gifts to him. They had no idea how to find him for they had no map. They had no guide. They had no GPS. They had no tour guide. The only thing that they could have that they could follow was a bright, shining star. And I can't help but to wonder, because it says that they traveled from the east and they was in a far distant land. And I can't help but to wonder if they felt discouraged, if they felt, you know, tired and, and worn out and, and wonder if they was ever going to find where Jesus was at. But I think to myself, when they felt discouragement, they just continued to look at that bright star. And that star would, li would lead them right where they need to be. And the scripture in verse 10 says that they rejoiced because of the star that led them where they needed to be. And I can't help but to wonder this. You know, what exactly led them to Jesus? Was it the star or was it the light from the star? I think a little bit of both. But I think it was that light from the star that had got their attention. It says the wise men could not see Jesus. They could only see the light from the star which led them to Jesus. And I want you to think about this. Had that light, had that star at any time in their journey, failed to give light, then the wise men would have been hopelessly lost. They would have been in, because they was in a strange country, strange land, they'd never been there before, they didn't know their way around, they was dependent upon that light to lead them to Jesus. Had that light have gone out any time, they would have just been wondrously lost. They would have been looking and, and searching but because of the light of the star, which they called Christ's or Jesus' star. And you can look in Revelation and it says, And Jesus said himself, I am the bright and morning star. But imagine where, how they would have felt if that light would have gone out. They would have never been able to go through Bethlehem or whatever place they was at at the time and find their way to the particular house that Jesus was in. And isn't this a, a, a truth that there are people in our, in our world today that are wandering hopelessly looking and searching for something. They try to find something that would satisfy them. 
and they try so many different things. They try pleasure of the flesh. They find, you know, try to find satisfaction and, and um, happiness in money and careers and in relationships. But you and I as Christians know the only true peace and satisfaction is in Jesus Christ. So as people are navigating through this world, they're blinded in the darkness. And only Jesus can give them satisfaction. And Jesus had put this responsibility on you and I. That we become the light of the world. God's not using a big star in the sky that shines so bright. But He uses His people. He uses, uses you and I to be the light. Let that be our prayer today. God, let me be a light. Let me be a person that can lead people to Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our calling is to be a bright light. There are some stars that cannot be seen with the naked eye. The only way that they could see the star or the light from the star is if they use a powerful telescope. My question today to you as a Christian is can people see the light of Jesus Christ in you with their naked eye just by looking at you? Or do they have to examine and, and spiritually speaking use a telescope to try to find a light that flickers in you? Is our light bright enough to lead somebody to Jesus? Or is it so dim that people can't hardly see Jesus in us? I challenge you today to be like that Bethlehem star. I challenge you this morning to be like the light that led the wise men to Jesus. Folks, it's you and I's responsibility to lead people to Jesus. And the only way that we're going to lead people to Jesus is if we are that light. Not our own light. Just like if you look at the moon and the sun, the moon has no light. At night time, you see the bright moon shining. The moon has no light. The moon reflects the light of the, from the sun. And folks, listen, you and I need to reflect the light of Jesus Christ. We need to reflect the sun's light. We need to be a light to people and let them see Jesus in us that we may be able to lead them. Because they're lost and they're dying without Jesus Christ. And if we're saved, we have an obligation to be that light. To lead somebody to Jesus. Let that be our prayer today. Thanks for watching. Love you all. Share this video. Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another devotion. Try to encourage you. Be a light to somebody today, is my prayer. Love you and God bless you.